I think sometimes when we're in our own head, when we're in our own head, we we don't like our feelings are in the way and we don't like to feel small and we don't like to feel like we're not doing a good job. So like we avoid these things. But like Ed said, how do you make something look small? You put something bigger next to it. Like if you're the biggest guy in the room, if you're the biggest person in all your meetings, like if you're the big dog and you're like, you're like going off on a call because you're just so everybody else is such a loser and you're at one recruit and they're at zero and you're like, that's your energy. Like you're just, you're whoa. It's you just completely, you're just missing the entire point. You're not competing with people that are at zero and one and three. You're competing with what you want from this, like from your life. Like, what do you want your life to look like? Where do you, like, what do you want? What do you want? We just came back from a trip of a lifetime. Guess what we're doing? We're planning the next one. One of our goals is to rent a yacht and sail the Mediterranean with our kids. It was an, it's the number one thing on my list since I started WFG. Number one. You guys saw my plan. I have all the countries listed out. Well, guess what we started doing a week ago? We started looking at boats. We started pricing it out. Started picking the spots. We started talking to a few people that have done it. We're starting to get some referrals of some boats that were good experiences. We're one step closer. We're one step closer to taking a private yacht, full chefs, sailing around the Mediterranean, and experiencing all that with our kids. We're one step closer to it. But what's your dream? What are you one step closer to? Or do you feel like maybe today you're one step further back than you were a year ago? My God, it's a scary feeling. And maybe you feel like that. And that's okay to feel like that if it's true. But if you don't get on this thing and you don't get serious about your game plan, I'm telling you, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're sending a universal message and you're trying to get lucky. You're trying to find the next superstar. You're just trying to, you're just trying to flip chairs and find the next person that's gonna build this under you. It, you gotta be ready to find the next superstar. You gotta be in the game. Like Ed says, you know how many people have recruited the next Ed Milet but weren't ready to lead them? You know how many people recruited the next Ed Milet and then took a week off? You people recruit the next Ed Milet and then shut up to the next Wednesday with their camera off 10 minutes late. <laughs> it's like, Steve, I can't, I'm suck at this thing. I can't win. Yeah, you just lost Rich Tholly because you were feeling sorry for yourself for the last three days. You're having a pity party, right? We don't know what we're missing out on by not having a plan, not being dialed in, and making this thing look way harder than it is. It's not that complicated, right? So thanks for sharing that, Burr. So... What I want to talk to you guys tonight is about thinking beyond SMD, <clears throat> okay? SMD is basically, really what you've done at SMD is you've gotten to that level where you can start to build your own base shop and have your own identity. But here's what I find, here's what I find with, with the SMD mindset, going SMD. I feel like we do a good job, we've done a good job talking about like going SMD and having strong standards and getting it done. And we've all had conversations about, man, going SMD and a lot of us have been going strong and we, we have a base shop goal and we set these goals and then because we don't follow through on them, because we don't have a plan, because we're not serious about it, we end up sometimes that our goal is like, well, I guess I just need to go SMD. But we have no momentum, no volume, no standards, hardly anybody showing up. And now SMD is a lot different than it was when we were thinking about it as it's the beginning, not the end. Your entire career here, it happens after SMD. This entire business happens after SMD. So your focus has to be thinking beyond SMD. I'm not talking about going bare minimum SMD. I'm talking about thinking beyond SMD. Like, like, When's the last time you actually sat down and thought about CEO? Like if I went around the room here and I asked every single one of you, what's the 12 month rolling points to go to CEO? How many of you could tell me the number? That's probably concerning. How many of you could tell me the 12 month rolling number for EMD? <clears throat> a few of you guys? Three of you. How many of you could tell me the 12 month rolling number to go SMD? right? Four, five. What does that tell you? It tells you we're not even thinking about it. Ah, I'll think about it when I, when I get closer. I'm just going to think about MD. Well, yeah, if that, but that's obviously not working right now. Or maybe it is, but you know what I mean? It's, it's not enough. It's not enough. EMD is the new SMD. <clears throat> EMD is where it starts. So life beyond life at EMD is really where this business starts. 
So the important thing is, is to start changing your mindset. Your life is not going to change at SMD. Here's the problem. If you happen to, to kind of find your way to SMD with a mediocre mindset, here's the, here's the worst thing that could happen. You end up making a bit more money with the same mindset, living the same comfortable lifestyle, you are trapped. You are gonna be trapped. You're gonna go from making 80 grand a year as an MD to 130 grand a year, 150 grand as an SMD. Your income's gonna go up. Your lifestyle's gonna go up a bit. You're gonna drive a little nicer car. You're gonna be a little less conscientious of your bills. You're gonna spend all 140, because you were spending all 90, you'll spend all 140. Save very little money, because people don't sp save money at 140. Just go talk to somebody making 140. You're not saving any money. Not in Calgary anyway. Can't imagine Toronto, right? You're not saving any money making 140 grand a year. So you got overhead here, you got office expenses. You're not, you're not saving any money, right? Real money, I'm talking real money. Like money that's gonna pad your retirement in the next 10 to 15. You can, you can save more than the average person, but not the real money that you need to. Um, and guess what's gonna happen? If you don't change your mindset, you're gonna get so stuck at SMD that you think a, it's a grind MD to SMD. The real grind is SMD to EMD. That's the real grind. Don't you guys see people get stuck at SMD? You guys think the, the big trap is associate MD? The real trap is SMD because it's got you by the nuts. Sorry for the, sorry for the language. It's got you. It's paying you a little bit more than you're worth for a little less effort than you were putting it at MD for you to not personally develop, not personally grow, not stretch your vision. You're kind of getting away with not having a game plan. You're barely were at MD, but you stumble, you found enough people, you manufactured a run, you convinced four people to not cancel their license, right? You got your spouse licensed, your neighbor, your brother, your cousin, you're paying for four people's ZNO, your 10th license hit, you're cursing the Fistra because they're taking so long. You've got 76,400 points on the system. You wrote both halves, but just put the half under one guy. You go SMD, right? You go, that's how most people go SMD by the way, right? You make 125 your first year and they, it's got you for life. That's what happens if you don't develop the mindset, if you don't set big goals, if you don't have a game plan, if you don't have a vision beyond SMD. So I would encourage you this weekend, like never before, <clears throat> start thinking big. Start thinking big. I can't tell you how many times I spent $80,000 a month on paper. Audrey, I, I'd be, I, I, I don't like to misstate. If I told you that I, 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 I'll say 500 times I've spent 80 grand a month, $83,333 on paper, I wouldn't be misstating it if I told you 500. By the time I was an MD, I'd probably, probably done it 200 times. I memorized every single contract level all the way up to the highest level immediately in the business. I knew it front to back, back to front, front to back, because I knew one thing for sure. I knew I was not coming here to be an SMD. I knew one thing for sure. I was not coming here to be a small MD, a small SMD, low recruiting numbers, to make 130 grand a year, to, to be self-employed to the day I die here. I was not coming here for that. So if you're not coming here for that either, you better start to figure out what it looks like on the other side. You better start to introduce yourself to EVC. You better start to introduce yourself to CEO. You might have to walk different. You might have to talk different. You might have to pick up a few new friends. You might have to think, you're gonna think a lot different and you should start to figure out how do I need to think to be a CEO? Because my God, my kids and my family deserve us to be a CEO. And I wanna tell you, there's nobody in this room that can't get the CEO, nobody. But it is absolutely not gonna happen at the same level of mindset you have today. It will not happen. The mindset has to change. The mindset has to grow. And that's why we call this mindset mastery, right? Because you got to get that mindset to the next level. And you guys are here thinking that EVCs have it all together. Most EVCs do not not have it all together. They don't necessarily have their marriage in order. They don't necessarily have their health in order. They don't necessarily have their finances in order. EVC are still a human being. You know what the difference between you and an EVC is right now? Somebody just had a game plan that they read every day and stuck to and executed at a way faster, way more intense level than you did. The difference between you and Nima Tar is, is not talent. It's, he's probably more talented now because he works harder, but it's a guy that executed a plan at a higher level, took less time off, had less down days, 
felt sorry for himself less, acted less like a victim, got around better people, asked better questions, was more coachable, put in a little bit extra work in a short period of time, and in three years is making seven figures. He still brushes his teeth. He still probably has bad days. He probably still fights with his girlfriend. He is the least perfect guy, just like we all are the least perfect person. But we look at those people like there's a secret sauce, there's a magic pill, it must be their system. I love when people call me and go, what's your system? It's gotta be your system. You do need a system, and we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. But if you don't have the mindset, you could have the best system in the world, right? If you don't have the mindset to be something bigger than you are, you have no reason to run that system at a high level. Or when you get to when you get to 200K, which is a dream income for most of you guys, you'll never grow beyond it. So start thinking about some things you wanna do. Start thinking about some charities. Start thinking about some, some stuff. Think big and put it into action. Do you guys, anybody wanna add anything to that or any, any, any thoughts that anybody has on that subject? I'm gonna get Nabby up here for, for, for a bit. He's gonna talk about some commitment stuff. And, and you know, I think it's funny because whenever there's the next person in the hierarchy that steps up and has a big run, everybody wants to know what the secret is. Every, the, the phone rings off the hook. Bring, bring, hey, can I get 20 minutes of your time and 10 minutes of your time? And it's a good thing because obviously there's something that person is doing to, uh, you know, to make sure that they're winning. But nobody's really listening. Nobody really wants to hear what it takes. You know what people are really looking for when they make those calls? They want to know this, this shortcut. What's the one thing I can do to work less and get better results? And they, I had a meeting with an EMD on Srinaka's team two months ago. And I could tell it was one of those meetings from the get-go because he's like, okay, I booked a meeting with this guy, 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 and you. And I'm going, okay. Okay, so I'm one of eight, great. Good way to start the meeting. And he like went through 12 questions and he was already on to the next question before I answered the first one. He wasn't even listening. And he was gonna take all the info from all eight people and he was gonna build a super, super duper pooper scooper system. And you would not believe it, the numbers haven't changed. And I gave him everything we had. I guess this, my stuff wasn't good enough because he didn't implement any of it, but not, nobody had good enough stuff because there was no secret in there. He didn't find the shortcut he was looking for. So he's the same person he was. But I'll just tell you, right? 12 years ago, the guy's phone who was ringing off the hook was Dave Wimbush, <clears throat> MVP of the hierarchy. Mike Fox, MVP of the hierarchy, right? Sally Storch, MVP of the hierarchy. Colm Burr was an MVP of the hierarchy. Trapper Goldsmith was an MVP of the hierarchy. Same thing happens. Phone's off the hook and everybody's ringing and everybody wants to know what the secret is. And sometimes when we are winning, we, we think that we are the secret. We think that it's always going to be this good, but really it comes back to in reality, the real separator is the mindset. And that's why you, sometimes you see people that are here and they come back to here and they come back to here and they go back to here is because there is no secret sauce. It's the mindset. The mindset is what matters. And the one thing that, that Nabby had at the time that he did that nobody else, well, I shouldn't say nobody, these did at a higher level was his mindset. Yes, he ran systems and he worked harder and he's talking to talk about a bunch of the stuff today and without any of that, he wouldn't be where he's at today. But one thing about Nabby is he went from here, rock bottom mindset, and he got it up to here and he held it there long enough to get up to where he is today. Now his job is to get it to the next level because if he taps it cool and doesn't get back up to DDR and all this stuff, he'll just be another statistic of a guy, and he won't be, but of a guy who went SMD and came back. Now he's not gonna be that guy. That's why I got him speaking here tonight. But I just wanna give him a lot of credit for being the guy in a pool of people. He was in a pool of many, many, many people and he stepped up and he ran and he, you know, he got to SMD and six figures and as an MD and, and, he, and he, because he had that mindset. So I wanna give him a round of applause and as much time as you want. So let's get up for Navigani.